Yeah, boy. JD. See you. I see you. Everybody hear me okay? So the main focus of today is going to be ground-based or animal-based movement. One thing that I really like about this kind of training is that it will bring in various elements that you may have seen before through calisthenics, through yoga, through um, sort of ground-based practices. But ultimately, we need to remember that anything that we're doing movement-wise is embedded from, from different things. Basically, we can cherry-pick the best things and then take what's good or what works for us and then we can take that into our own practice or our own movement. So I like to I like to move in this way. Uh, very very brief history, but animal movements or ground based movements were one of the first things that I started getting into when I wasn't um, when I was basically getting stagnant with my own training. I started to look towards animal movements or a different way of moving, and that was a similar sort of time that I started. With calisthenics as well so those two for me sort of conjoined and i started enjoying it so today i will take you through a little bit of a warm-up prep sequence the nice thing about animal movements is you can use these as part of your warm-up so uh, we'll move fairly statically we'll move them more dynamically into more pattern based and then we'll start sequencing some of this stuff together so basically a three-phase attack so get the body prepared, get the wrists, shoulders, being able to apply good force and good range of motion. From there, we'll go into the more specific patterns or the animal-based sort of movement stuff. And then from there, we'll add it into more of like a sequence, a bit more dynamic. So hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, any questions, let me know in the comments as we go through. I'll hopefully try and answer them as we go. If not, make sure you got some water. Although it's raining outside, it's pretty wet, so there's plenty of water out there. Cool. So to start with, what we're going to be doing, wrists wrists are essential. Again, I've said this, and the other coaches, the other guys say it so much, but wrists are so fundamental. As soon as you get like a problem with your wrist or your elbow, then that stays aggravated for quite a long time. So I'm going to get these nice and warm. So to start with, take your fingers, clap them. We're going to rock them left and right, forwards and backwards, and then we're gonna string that together. Might get a little bit of clicking and popping, and then we can increase that. Go back the other way, back to left and right, forwards and backwards. Very good guys, very good. So now we're gonna start bringing the shoulders involved. Oh, YouTube. So from here, shoulders, we're going to be on the ground, palms facing flat to the ground. I'm going to be in this uh, quadruped position or on all fours, and I'm going to keep my arms straight. I'm going to drop all the way down, push away. Dropping all the way down, push away. So we're going to do five of these. Down, push, five. Notice how this is a lot of scapular work. Push, four, all the way down, four, three. Notice how I'm not sagging my bum up or down. I'm just keeping that neutral in the middle. Down, push, two, all the way down, all the way up, last one. I also like to, from here, throw in a little bit of lateral movement as well. So thinking about doing like an oblique crunch. So I'm in this position. I'm going to think about squeezing my shoulder to my hip. Squeeze one way. I'm going to do five each side. Squeeze the other way. Squeeze. Good. Two. Left. Right. That's three. Left. Right. That's four. Left. Right. Good. That's five. Nice. I'm just going to move you guys over a little bit. Again, hopefully you've got a little bit more space so you can be doing this, whether it's in your kitchen or your living room. But you can always refresh yourself and come back to this. These are all available on YouTube for in infinitum. Instagram, 24 hours. So from here, seated shoulder extension. So we're going to be on the floor on our bums, shoulders behind like this. And I'm just going to rock 
backwards and forwards. If you haven't got the hamstring mobility, feel free to keep a bent knee. I'm going to be rocking backwards and forwards. If you've got the range, feel free to move your palms further away from your bum. Just oscillate left and right. I can feel a real stretch coming over my, um, especially over my right arm, over my elbow, bicep, um, pec, front delt, anterior delt. I can feel it in there. And don't worry about reps for this one. Moving backwards and forwards. And then as soon as it starts to feel easier, slip a little bit further forwards. Nice, guys. So this is a seated shoulder extension. Good. Final one, if you've got it, a little bit further. Again, if you're getting any pain or discomfort in these positions, step away. But you might feel that you need to release that tension. So slowly bring your bum back to your wrists and release. So the good thing about mobility, we need that strength in that range. So we're going to have a look, little look at being more active in this position now. So we're gonna go back into a, so anything above the body, shoulder flexion, behind, shoulder extension. So we're gonna go back into shoulder extension. Yes, does calisthenics help scapular stability? It certainly does. I've got a history of shoulder problems. Tim and Jacko have got even worse shoulder problems, but now through calisthenics, they've uh, created a, a far more robust or bomb-proof shoulder. So, Back into this position, we're going to be on our bums, so shoulder extension, palms or fingertips facing away. So from here, I'm going to squeeze my glutes. So don't worry about being all the way up here to start with. I'm just thinking about contracting. So I'm going from hip flexion into a bit more extension. You can move left and right, so you feel more stress coming through the wrists. From here. I'm going to take my left foot and twist, put it underneath this leg, and then as I do that, I'm going to come over the top. So I'll show you again. So glutes are on. I'm going to take my left foot, I'm going to take it underneath that leg, and as I do that, I'm going to bring that right arm over the top. Now I'm going to finish in this palms flat position. So one more time. Again, whether you're moving in and out with this with me, that's cool because uh, what we want is more active. So pushing down through the shoulders, glutes on. I'm gonna take that left foot underneath, right arm over the top. Now what we can do, now we're in this position, I'm gonna take this right leg, post that through. So notice how I'm creating this stability. Pushing down with the left arm, down with the left leg. Take that right leg through, coming over the top. So you'll almost end up doing like a break dancing move. Just turn this light on. So you see that? So you almost end up in like doing like a little break dance. That ability to generate tension. So we'll start in this palms facing down this time. <clears throat> I'm going to keep going the same way and then we're going to bring it back. Okay. So this time, pause my feet, pushing down. I'm not letting my hips sag. I'm not pushing my bum up. Keeping it fairly neutral. So, right foot underneath, and I'm gonna reach open, open the chest up to the sky. So this time we're gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna start and finish in this position. So, pushing down through the ground, left foot underneath, right arm over the top, find neutral. From here, right foot through, left arm over the top. Start and finish in that position, cool. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go the opposite way now. So you got a bit of an idea of what I'm after. This time, start in this position. We're going to break it down. You should have one side that you feel better on. So pushing down through the ground, right foot this time. Post that underneath. Left arm, big wave over the top. Pushing down. Okay. That one again. Down through the ground. Right foot. Post that through. Left arm over the top. And I'm going to pivot. Bum is now in the air. Good, one more, so reverse. Then we're gonna go all the way over the top. So pushing down to the ground, right foot, post through, big wave over the top in this position. Now, if you wanna come all the way back, remember, left foot through, I'm back, okay? So you're basically going all the way over the top. 
Any questions coming through? Keep calling wrong legs. Ah, but am I in the mirror? That's the question. Because it's opposite. <laughs> so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Okay. The main thing at this point, we're just trying to move. So don't worry too much. If you're getting confused about arms and legs or which one I'm shouting, please don't worry about that. That doesn't matter. Okay. The main principle is we're just getting warm. You can feel, feel slightly um, engine temperature getting up. Nice and warm through the shoulders. So what we're going to do now is work laterally. So we haven't done a lot of lateral prep. Okay. So we've done basically in the front, we've done the back, we've done the side. So we're going to move now. So what we're going to do now is, so palms come down. And now I'm going to do what's called like a, a lateral hop. So I'm in this position, pushing down, and I'm going to take my hips over to one side. So leave my palms here, and come back to the center, and then I'm going to go over to the other side. Okay? So it's up to you how much pressure you put through the shoulders. Remember, this is like the first movement we've done this in this plane. So palms in front. So from here, I'm going to put pressure into my wrists. I'm gonna take my hips over to the side. The palms down, hips up, over to the side. Does that make sense? Just turn the uh, speaker off on this. Uh, cool, right, so from here, what you can do now is you start to get more confident, you can spend a little bit longer in that inverted position. Okay, so think about stalling the hips over the top. This is a really nice movement if you want to get better at handstands. So rather than just kicking up, kicking up, kicking up all the time, what we can do is spend more time building a larger or wider or more robust base. IGTV, you're a bit wonky there, aren't you? Ciao. Ciao for, to Italy. Buongiorno a tutti. Hopefully that's right. Cool. So from here, palms to the side. I'm going to go down, move into the side, pop up, moving over, side, pop up, moving over. And gradually building more and more confidence. Again, we're not going to go for like a max uh, max effort hold or anything, just having fun moving left and right. So, palms to the side, hips up, move to the side, down, up, move to the side. I do one towards you. So, palms to the side, popping up. So I'm really thinking about pushing, creating a nice straight arm, driving the ground away, but I'm only getting a really small time on attention. I do one back, and then we'll move into the next phase, okay? So palms to the side. Come back to you. Nice. Very good, guys. So hopefully a little bit of that makes sense. And again, don't worry too much about another day. Don't worry too much about um, the names of things or um, like what side or whatever. As long as you feel like balanced, as long as you feel warm at this stage, because this is like quite a fun um, exercise or workout that we're looking to do. <coughs> cool. So now we're going to move into more patterning. So don't worry if you don't feel like um, you need to do a bit more. We're going to be doing more. So don't worry about that. So now we're going to go into like basic crawling patterns. So how we can start moving our body. Again, with um, animal movement or ground-based movement, it's, it's bringing a lot of awareness. It's basically connecting our kinetic chain. So from our heads to all the way to our toes, it's basically connecting everything in between. So you have to make sure you've got that good integration, good awareness, good strength through that kinetic chain like transfer of force, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, and also, we need to be thinking about investing in our physical pension. So some days I don't want to do handstands. Some days I don't want to go off and do like a full strength session. I just want to move. So in the morning, I try and do five, 10 minutes of movement. In the evening, five, 10 minutes of movement. And I don't really have to label that. So we're going to have a really fun bit of, a, bit of time now. We're going to go into a basic crawl pattern. So I'm even crawling as we go back. But when we're doing like crawling, so this is like a um, like a chimp pattern I like to think of it of. 
But think about, we're going to go opposite arm, opposite foot. So I'm going to go forwards with my right arm, but, and then my left knee. So opposite, opposite arm, opposite foot. Right arm, left, left, right, right, left. So I'm, I'm constantly moving opposite arm, opposite foot all the time. Uh, two seconds. Right. So hopefully that makes sense. Maybe you've got more room than me. If you haven't got, if you haven't got loads of space, you can do it statically. Just be here, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, back, back, back. So you don't need loads and loads of space. Cool. So we're going to go through 10 total reps, whether you do those all forwards, whether you do them on the spot, doesn't matter. So 10 total reps. So doesn't matter which arm, but remember, you're going to go opposite arm, opposite knee, opposite arm, opposite knee. Cool. 10 reps. Basic crawl pattern. So three, two, one, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good. So maybe you did a little bit like me, you had to do five forwards and five back. Even just reversing that pattern is good for the brain. Bringing in that, that element of um, proprioception, working out which arm, which foot, even just reversing the pattern can be quite interesting. So what we're going to do now, JD, this one's for you, the bear crawl. So it's the same opposite arm, opposite foot, but what we're thinking about now, we're going to be in like a piked position. So bum is in the air, I'm going to go opposite arm, opposite foot, opposite, 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 okay? So you just have a little play with that. Notice how if your hamstrings are really tight, keep a slight bend in your knee. Obviously, it's going to be slightly easier to have a bent knee than it is to be fully piped, hands flat to the ground, okay? So we're going to have a little play, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, and then we're going to do 10 reps. Okay, so I'm going to lead with my right arm and left foot. You can see that. So right arm, left foot, left arm, right foot. Right arm, left foot, left arm, right foot. Backwards, backwards. Again, don't worry about, again, you're, you're seeing like the mirror image of me. So don't worry about trying to follow exactly what I'm doing or like the, the side that I'm saying. Just think about more about Moving your opposite arm, opposite foot, opposite, opposite, like that, okay? So we're going to go for those 10 total reps. Anyone feel that in the hamstrings? It's super tight in the hamstrings, right? <laughs> so this is a really nice movement to get everything warm, posterior chain, glutes, hammies, and uh, I, feel, I feel ridiculous. <laughs> so just be thankful that you're probably doing it at home, not in a gym. When I first started learning all this stuff, I was doing it up and down the, uh, the side of a very busy gym. Anyway. So we're going to do 10 reps. So you can feel that in the hamstrings, right? 10 total reps. I'm going to do five to you, and then come five back. Okay? Ready? So I'm going to go right arm, left foot, left arm, right foot. Three, two, one. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good. And think of that as like a dynamic hamstring mobilization so we're going to make that slightly harder now because some of you will be going that's well easy colin good to have you boom so some of you will be thinking that's well easy coach so what we're going to do now add a little push up into the end of it because what that will do think about your hamstrings when your hamstrings are here as soon as we add a little bend forwards you're going to increase that amount of range that hamstring has to be active through cool so Feel free, if you want to do this statically, you can do. I'll probably do it statically, change left, change right. But we're going to add a little push at the end. It doesn't have to be a massive push. You're just going to bend those arms and you'll feel the stretch. Okay? So here, I'm going to go right arm, left foot, little bend. Left arm, right foot, bend. Forwards, bend. Good, work your back. Five. Four, three, two, and one. So you can feel that more in your wrists. I can definitely feel that one side more than the other. So I don't know if any of you noticed that, 
my right side definitely feels tighter. Uh, yes, so, so someone's uh, mentioned on YouTube, if you know that you've got a pre-existing problem with your hamstrings, then it's always good to have um, a little bit of self myofascial release before. So maybe you think, oh, that my, my glutes are really not loving that. So what you can do is start working into those areas and um, start loosening off some of that tight tissue. Um, so some, some people saying bend both arms. What you can do, as you get more and more progressed, you can just use one arm to do a push. So I was using both arms there. So I was coming forwards, feel like a stretch, and then bend both arms, come forward, stretch, forward, stretch. But as you get more confident, you can come forwards and then just use one switch, one. Hopefully that makes sense. But again, we're still just using it, yep, flat hands as much as possible because you'll feel that stretch coming through, through the tricep, through the bicep, and the uh, wrist flexors. Cool. So I was, uh, so again, just to answer your question, uh, Karti Kashta, I was putting both hands together, but you can stagger them or you can use one. So again, with everything, we can progress as much as, much as, or as little as we want. I was using both, but you can stagger or you can take one away, try it with one. And we're gonna move into now this lateral, but making it harder, okay? So from this position, <clears throat> I'm gonna be here. So if you've got a full squat, feel free to sit in a full squat for this. So I'm gonna to go to take my right arm over to the side. I'm gonna stretch over, come back to center so I can really feel opening through the lat and also the obliques. So left arm down now, take right arm over the top, lean over, back to the center. Okay, again, Instagram's quite narrow, so I'll try and stay in shot. So right arm, Again, if you've got good range, you can keep your feet flat to the ground and come over the top. But I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about staying in quite a narrow plane. I'm not coming forwards, I'm not coming backwards. I'm basically thinking, staying in line with my hips, and over the top, back down, same on the other side, back over the top, come down, okay? So you can really feel a stretch coming through this lateral sling. So now we're going to make that slightly harder for those of you who want it. Again, no pressure. We're going to turn this into more of a hop, so turn it into more dynamic. So remember how first time we did it, palms down, we're here, just going whoop, whoop, like this. Now what we're going to be doing is coming over, big stretch, and then, and then bringing hips over. So we're doing it over a much bigger distance. Hopefully that makes sense. So initially, we just stayed on the ground. So again, yep. So Kartikashta, if you've got the range, you can keep feet on the ground. So initially, we just do a stretch. But now what I want you to do, I want you to reach with the arms and then bring the hips over. I'll show you another time. Quite a lot going on. So I'm going to be squat position, lean. So coming to you, over the top. So it almost looks like a like a baby cartwheel. Think of it like that. And don't worry about trying to do the world's best cartwheel. We haven't got loads of space. So I'll do one going back. So I'm in full squat position. So a full squat. I'm going to do a big reach over the top. And then I'm going to take my hips around the side. So arms over the top, hips around the side. So I'm going to end up facing that way. Hips. Like that. So, if those of you who want to learn a cartwheel, this is um, this is going to help you. So, if you've got the space, I don't want to kick any chandeliers, chandeliers, <laughs> light fittings. So, we're going to try and do one one way, one back. So, I'm going to come to you and come back. Okay. I want you guys to try this as well. So, full squat position, big reach over the top. So, arms, big windmill over the top. I'm gonna pop over and I'm gonna go back. Big reach over the top, like that, okay? 
Make sure you do both sides. So I'm going to reach to the left hand side now. Big reach. Pop. Then we're going to go back. Big reach. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so that, if you're trying to learn, learn a cartwheel, that's that's like a really good basic entry into it. So eventually. We have to spend more time in that middle position. Does that make sense? So you'd be here. So you're going to put one arm down, chase it with the other, and then rather than hips going around the side, hips go over the top. Like that. But I'm not expecting you to do that today. It's just to get you used to it. Okay? So now, we're going to go into crab. Okay? So that position that we did before, that shoulder extension, we're going to be here, pushing down into the ground. But now I want you to bring opposite arm, opposite foot in front, touch your toes, come back. So if you're struggling with your shoulders or your wrists in this position, you can do it on the ground, opposite arm, opposite foot, opposite arm, opposite foot. But for those of you who are confident and strong, you're going to do 10 total reps. Hopefully that makes sense. So pushing down, we're going to go right arm off, left arm off, touch my toe, come back. I'm going to move over to the side, left arm off, right foot up, come back down. Okay? So we're going to do 10 of those. So hopefully you've had a little practice. We're going to do 10 total reps. If you're struggling with your wrists at this point, either feel free to make a fist push down because rather than being in wrist extension like this you can just go straight down so it's neutral okay so either way however you want to do it we're going to do 10 reps okay so push into ground 10 i'm going to go left arm right foot now nine good eight seven go ahead, keep those glutes squeezed Six. If you've got the range, straight legs. Five. Four. Three. Good. Two more. Two. Last one. So you can probably feel that coming through shoulders, pushing down into the ground. <clears throat> So that's a really nice one. So I like to think of that called like a crab with a reach. So with their bracing in shoulder extension, but then we're having to create um, force, brace the transverse abdominis, keeping everything nice and tight and working across the body each time. Cool. So now I'm going to move on to my favorite one, the lizard. So again, you'll notice there's a lot of opposite, opposite, opposite. So from here, I'm really thirsty today, excuse me. Hope you're staying hydrated. Right, so from here, what we're gonna do is this lizard, I'm gonna break it down, and then I'm gonna show you the harder version. Okay, so last one of these, and then we're gonna go into putting like a little sequence together. So we did the preparation, wrist, shoulders, and then working the lateral. We're in the patterning part, so we're just moving through various different animals. We did crawling, bear, lateral hops, crab with reach, and now we're going to do the lizard, and then finally, we're going to do a little sequence. Cool. So from here, I'm going to be going, I'm going to keep my right and right side tight. I'll show you this way. And so right is tight, so I'm thinking about bringing that left leg nice and long, left is long, right is tight. So I'm going to leave my... Um, my right leg close. So in this position, you'll feel like a big stretch. Now what you can do in this, so notice how my, my palms are together. They're like in the same line. If you want to make it slightly harder, reach forward with that left arm. Now you can see I'm making a really long shape. Left is long, right is tight. So in this position, I'm then going to come back to the center. I'm going to go the other way. So left is now tight. Left hand is nearly touching left foot. Now my right is tight like this, okay? I'm going to change one more time. So bring back to center. So I, I like this as a stretch to start with. 
Now, if you can, to keep this front foot flat to the ground, but if you have to come onto the toe like this, that's fine. So I'm here, right is tight, left is long, back to the center. Now I'm gonna go left is tight, right is long. Okay, that makes sense. So that's like, that's like the beginning of it. You can feel the stretch coming through the hip flexor. You're having to generate a good position here. So remember, when we do like foot stands or handstands or a good push-up, remember what we're trying to do is keep everything nice and tight. I'm not trying to get my elbow out here. I'm squeezing that in, elbow tight, so I can drive forward. Reese. So what we're going to do now, we're going to do it a little bit more dynamically. I'll come towards you so you can see a little bit more. So notice how initially we just preempted it by doing it statically. Now we're going to start moving more dynamically. So right is tight, left is long. That's a really easy way to remember it to start with. Right is tight, left is long. Remember, if you want to be here, both palms to the side, that's fine. You can generate more torque, internal rotation, keep those arms nice and tight. If you're feeling confident, go along with that left hand side. Notice the distance there. From here, I'm going to change. So my left is long, uh, sorry, left is tight, right is long, and I'm going to change. If you're feeling good, reverse that. This is probably one of the harder ones we've done because you're having to be strong or a much longer um, lever length. Your kinetic chain is working a lot harder. So we're going to start pairing some of these together. I'm just going to shuttle backwards and forwards. So I'm aiming for 10 of these. So whether you break that down and whether you're just doing them nice and tight here and then changing, you're still having to generate force. And that's really good. Loads of time and attention. Those of you who feel stronger, I want you to try, start piecing them together. So I'm going to be here. I'm going to go right is tight, left long, and then I'm going to be moving backwards, forwards and backwards. Okay, so 10 total reps. Maybe you're outside, maybe you've got loads of room. <laughs> Not all of us are that lucky. Come. What we're we going to do? 10 of those lizard walks. So don't feel like, don't feel like uh, you're cheating yourself. Just be honest with yourself. So right is tight, left is long. Stretch. I'm going to throw a little push in there as well. I'm going to change sides. Left is tight, right is long. Don't feel strong. Put a little push in there as well. Left is long now. That's three. I'm going to reverse it. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Good. Two more. Nine. One more. And ten. Woo. That was quite tough, right? You can feel that. So that's very similar to if you want to start getting into a one-arm push-up because you're having to generate force, keep the elbows tight, come down, push up. Mm. Can't do left. Okay. So if you're if you're really good on one side but not so good on the other side, you'll tell me one or two things. One, you're not confident, i.e. you can't generate enough stability to generate force. Two, you're not strong enough. Okay, and that's not a massive thing. Don't worry about that. That's not a, um, I'm not calling you out or anything. But if you're finding that, just make a mental note and go, oh, when I do my right hand side, I'm super strong like this. I can go all the way down, kiss the floor, come back up. But when I go on the other side, I'm not going as far. It might be slightly inhibited through range. It might be a weaker side. It might be a number of things. So just make a little, a little mental note. Uh, another question there. Lissetti Motsumi, yes, really, really good for hip mobility because you're basically having to do a full lunge, right? And then you're also increasing that range by bringing yourself close to the floor. Yeah, so I can really feel that through my hips. Right. Hopefully that makes sense. What we're going to do, so any questions, any further questions, please feel free to put them in. I'll answer some at the end. But we'll move into this final, final part, 
Uh, any pain in your hip flexor, try and stay away from pain at all. It might be that uh, bigger position, so either bring a shorter position in, um, so you're not having to generate as much mobility through that full length. Cool, right, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna start piecing it together. So think about, we're gonna start in the center, we're gonna move, we're gonna do a lateral hop, lizard, hop back, bear crawl, okay? So we're gonna start in the center, move over to the side, come forward, back, back to the center. Then we're gonna do both sides. We're gonna go over to the left, forward, back, back to the center. That'll be one rep. I've taught you through it now, so don't worry, I'll be shouting it out. Yeah, so some people will have very confused neighbors if they're snooping on you. So what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna go from the center. Start and finish in the center position. So I'm in full squat, but feel free to be stood up. So full squat. I'm going to take my hands to the side. I'm going to do a lateral hop. I'm then going to go lizard crawl forwards and back. Uh, and then from there, bear crawl back to the center. Does that make sense? So lateral hop. I'm going to pop over to the side. I'll just talk you through it. We're going to drop down into lizard. Lizard. And back. Back to the center. I'm going to bear crawl. So from here, left arm, right foot. Right on left foot, left on right foot, back, all the way down, back to the center. So I've done my right side, okay? We're then going to do that same on the left-hand side. So I'll show you another time. Feel free to go through this with me. From here, lateral hop. I'll start here. So lateral hop, boom, like this. From here, drop down into my lizard. Lizard, lizard, from back. I'm then going to take my hips high into a pike, into a bear. Out, out, three, four, all the way down, back to the center. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Again, I'll, I'll shout that out for you. So we're going to start in the center, move over to the side. So lateral hop, like that, that mini cartwheel, baby cartwheel. Lizard crawl out. I do one, two, one, two. Then go bear crawl, one, two, one, two. Back to the center. Yeah? Right. I'll be shouting it out, don't worry. So, start and finish in the center position. I'm going to go through this four times. So, I'm going to go out, back to the center. That's one, two, three, four. Right. Hopefully, you're keeping up. Quite a lot to think about. We're just adding these movements together. Feel free to scale it back or make it as hard as you want. So, starting in the center. Move to the side, pop it up. Then I'm going to drop down into this lizard. So I'm going to go four, three, two, one. From here, straight into my bear crawl. I'm going to do four. So two out, two back. Four, three, two, one. Back to the left hand side now. So hands over to the left, popping up, moving over. So this time, lizard, starting on the left. Lizard. Three, two, one. Straight into that bear crawl, boom, up. Opposite arm, opposite four. Three, two, one. Move back to the center. Pop, good. That's two. That makes sense, we've got two more. So from here, palms down. Moving over to the side. Lizard, four, three, two, one. Straight into that bear crawl, boom, up. Opposite arm, opposite foot. Four, three, two, one. All the way down, back to the center, pop. Final one. So, I'm gonna pop to the left, lateral. Then from here, lizard, left arm, right foot. Three, two, one. Bear crawl this time. Four, three, two, one. Back to the center, hands to the side. Pop. Oh, and done. Good. Very nice, guys. Very nice. So you can feel that. Even though it doesn't sound like a lot of work, you can really feel that in your legs. 
having to push, having to make sure you're in good positions. But the main thing, the main thing I want you to take away from this is, it's fun. I can imagine you guys at home laughing, whether you're doing it with your family, whether you're doing it with your friends, just enjoying some of that, going wild, yeah. You can feel it, right? Just having fun. And especially during this time uh, uh, with COVID, there, there isn't a lot of like fun out there. But fun, it actually helps boost your immunity. When you've got positive thoughts, that radiates through your body. So, um, yeah, so uh, that's the other thing. So a really good point there by Annabelle Grundy. So you might be fine in like a static element, boom. But then as soon as you start putting the bits together and that awareness, that's just a skill. And over time, for some of you, these might be absolutely completely new movement patterns. So you can really feel that through your body, linking these things together. And again, I want to be doing this when I'm 70. I want to be moving, having fun, enjoying this, this body that we've been blessed with. Okay, so obviously feel free to do more of those or even let me know and say Coach Owen at Performance OBJ. If you start putting some of these things together, I'd love to know what you're doing. Yeah, monkey, lizard, bear, boom. Absolutely love it. Okay, so remember as well during this time that, um, that it's really important that we connect with each other. So at the School of Calisthenics, we are um, promoting just well-being. And through this time, some of these things that we've been doing are um, taken from Bodyweight Basics, which is free, completely free throughout the whole of lockdown. So feel free to go and grab that at schoolofcalisthenics.com, Bodyweight Basics. Have a look for Bodyweight Basics. If you've got any problems, please shout me, Coach Owen. I'll send you a link to that. Handstand Guide. Sick handstand guide it is honestly one of the best products I think they've done. Really awesome. And there's loads of things. So you can win T-shirts with player layer, handstand up to Corona, prizes to be won pretty much every day, whether it's coffee or pants, loads of cool stuff. Um, but most importantly, just keep moving, guys. Really, really can't stress that enough. Just enjoy your training. Don't worry about what it looks like. Have fun. Get your kids involved. And it's really scalable, right? So really good. So YouTube, don't go anywhere, IGTV. YouTube, I want to thank you so much. I just checked there's no questions I've missed. Yeah, you can feel it in your legs, right? Um, so hopefully I've got all of those. Any problems, please shout me, Cohen, Performance OBJ, and I'll be happy to answer your questions, okay? I'm available to help you guys. So, much love, and I'll see you. Um, I'll see you again on Friday, but remember there's something every day. Coach Georgie doing some yoga later um, at 4 o'clock, I believe. Tim tomorrow, Jack of Thursday, and me again Friday. So something going on every day for you to enjoy for free. Cool. Right. Peace and love. Bye-bye. Yeah.